This video is sponsored by Brilliant. Hey guys, this looks like a fun one. We're given a triangle that's made up of five triangles inside of it. We know the areas of these four triangles are two, three, four, and five, but we don't know the area of the blue triangle on top. And it's asking what is the area of that blue triangle. We're also given that the base of this blue triangle is parallel to the base of the larger triangle. If you want to try it on your own, pause it right now, because I'm going to solve it in three, two, one. First, let's look at the blue triangle that we're trying to solve. Enhance. Let's call the top angle alpha, and that means this angle up here will also be alpha. And let's call this angle in the corner beta, which means this angle up here will also be beta. And then since these two segments are parallel, this angle is also equal to beta. These are called corresponding angles. Here's the notes right here. Anytime you have two parallel lines and a transversal cutting through them like this, these two angles are called corresponding angles and they are congruent to each other. So these are both equal to beta. And then the sum of the interior angles of any triangle is equal to 180 degrees. So this angle down here will be equal to 180 minus alpha minus beta. And same thing for the larger triangle, this this angle down here will be 180 minus alpha minus beta. And now we have two triangles with three pairs of corresponding congruent angles. That means these two triangles are similar. There's a lot of things we can do with similar triangles. First, let's label the base of our blue triangle B sub one and the base of our larger triangle B sub two. And we can even change this up here. Let's label the base of the blue triangle as B sub one. Now we can express the scale factor of these and also the area ratio. The scale factor of the smaller triangle over the larger triangle triangle will be b sub 1 over b sub 2. And we can also do the area ratio, the area of the smaller triangle over the area of the larger triangle. That's equal to the scale factors squared. So it'd be b sub 1 squared over b sub 2 squared. And that's true for any similar figures. The areas will always be in the same ratio as the square of the scale factor. So now we got to try to figure out a value for b sub 1 over b sub 2. I think we're done with all the angles. We probably don't need this and we probably don't need this. Next, let's focus on this green triangle. Let's construct the height of this triangle and let's label it h sub 1. So the area of this triangle will equal 1 half base times height. And then we can do the same thing for the red triangle. Let's construct its height and let's label it h sub 2. The area of this triangle will also be 1 half base times height. Or in other words, 1 half of b sub 1 times h sub 2. So that's pretty cool. Let's work on these a little bit. The area of the green triangle is 4 four and the area of the red triangle is two. And then from here to get rid of the one halves, we can multiply both sides of both equations by two. On top, two times four is equal to eight. And down here, two times two is equal to four. And then on top, one half times two will cancel each other out. And then same thing down here, one half times two will cancel each other out. Ultimately, we're trying to solve for b sub one and b sub two. So let's get these expressed in terms of b sub one and b sub two. Let's divide both sides of this equation by b sub two and both sides of this equation by b sub one. On the right hand side, the b sub two and the b sub two will cancel each other out. And we'll be left with h sub one is equal to eight over b sub two. And then for this one down here, the b sub one and the b sub one will cancel each other out. And we'll be left with h sub two is equal to four over b sub one. These two equations look important. Let's put a box around them and let's move them down here. Now for this next step, this is gonna be fun. We're gonna focus on this trapezoid. The formula for the area of a trapezoid is one half times the height times the sum of the two parallel sides. So for this trapezoid, it'll be equal to one half times the height, which is H1 plus H2, that's the height of the trapezoid, times the sum of the two parallel sides, B sub one plus B sub two. Now from here, we can clean this up a bit. We know the area of the trapezoid. It's gonna be the sum of all these little triangles inside of there, and that's all equal to 14. And then for the right-hand side, let's focus on this H sub one and the H sub two. We can substitute these two values for H sub one and H sub two. H sub one is equal to eight over B sub two, and then we can add to that H sub two, which is equal to four over B sub one. And then we can just copy down everything else. And then from here to get rid of the one half, let's multiply both sides of the equation by two. On the left hand side, two times 14 is equal to 28. And on the right hand side, the two times the one half will cancel each other out. Let's focus on the right hand side. We're gonna have to multiply all this out. It'll be this times this, plus this times this, plus this times this, plus this times this. For the first term, let's rearrange it like this. So we have eight times this ratio. And then for the second term, the b sub two on top and the b sub two on bottom will cancel each other out. So the second term is eight. 
And then for the third term, this B sub one and this B sub one will cancel each other out, leaving us with four. And then for the last term, let's put the four in front and rearrange it like this. And then let's combine these like terms. Eight plus four is equal to 12. Let's smush everything together and let's bring down the 28. Next, let's get rid of this 12. Let's subtract 12 from both sides of the equation. On the left-hand side, 28 minus 12 is equal to 16. And on the right-hand side, the 12 and the negative 12 will cancel each other out. And now we can still simplify it a little bit more. Each of these coefficients is divisible by four. So let's divide everything by four. 16 over four is four. Eight over four is equal to two. And four over four is equal to one. And now this is fully simplified. And this is a quadratic. I think this might be my favorite part. Can you see why this is a quadratic? I'm kind of excited to show you. Let's multiply everything on both sides by this ratio b sub one over b sub two. On the left-hand side, it's four times this. And then for two of this times this, it ends up being two, this is squared. And then for the third term, these reciprocals will cancel each other out, leaving us with one. So now we have a quadratic. We have this squared, we have this, and then we have the constant. Let's set everything equal to zero. On the left-hand side, this will all cancel out, leaving us with zero. And on the right-hand side, we can stick it in there just like that. And now we have our a, b, and c. We can do the quadratic formula. The b sub one over b sub two will be equal to negative negative four, which is equal to four, plus or minus the square root of negative four squared, which is equal to 16, minus four times two times one. And then the whole thing will be divided by two times two. And now we can clean this up. Four times two times one is equal to eight, and 16 minus eight is also equal to eight. So we end up with the square root of eight. And then the square root of eight can be rewritten as square root of four times square root of two. And the square root of four is equal to two. So on top we have four plus or minus two root two. And then on bottom two times two is equal to four. Now from here, each of these three coefficients are even, so they're all divisible by two. On top, the four and the two will become two and one. And on bottom, four divided by two is two. This one is implied, we can get rid of it and smush everything together. So now we have our ratio of b sub one over b sub two. Let's take a look at this plus or minus. We have a plus version and a minus version. So if we look at this, the b sub one over b sub two, the b sub one is smaller than b sub two. So in this ratio, the top has to be smaller than the bottom. But two plus root two is larger than two, so this is not possible. But then for this one, two minus root two is smaller than two, so we're good to go. And now that we have this, I don't think we need these anymore. And we should be ready for these notes. Before we substitute these in, let's get everything squared. So let's square both sides of the equation. Anytime you square a fraction like this, the square can go to both the top and the bottom. Let's do the bottom first. It's going to be 2 squared, which is equal to 4. And then to do the top, let's give ourselves some room. This whole thing squared is equal to this whole thing times itself. And then after we multiply this all out, we end up with 4 minus 2 root 2 minus 2 root 2 plus 2. We can move all the like terms together, and then we can combine them. 4 plus 2 is equal to 6, and negative 2 root 2 minus 2 root 2 is negative 4 root 2. We can smush everything together, and just like before, all of our coefficients are even. This six and the four will become three and two, and the four divided by two is equal to two. And now we have the b sub one squared over b sub two squared. So we are ready to substitute it into here. Let's get rid of the box and the title, and let's focus on the left-hand side. The area of our blue triangle is equal to the question mark, so let's change this to question mark. And then the area of the larger triangle will be all of these added up plus the question mark. And two plus three plus four plus five is equal to 14. And now the left-hand side is done. It's question mark over 14 plus question mark. And then on the right-hand side, we can substitute what we found earlier. And now we have one equation in terms of the question mark. We just got to solve for the question mark. For the first step, let's cross multiply. It'll be this times this equals this times this. And now from here, we have a question mark on both sides, so we gotta break it out of here. There's a couple different ways we can do this. I don't know if this is the best one, but I'm just gonna do the first thing I can think of. Let's multiply all this out. Now let's move everything with the question mark to the right-hand side. We can do that by subtracting three question mark and adding two root two question mark. On the left-hand side, all of this will cancel out. And on the right-hand side, let's bring all this over here. Two question mark minus three question mark is negative one question mark. And now everything on the right-hand side has a question mark. Let's factor out that question mark. We're left with the negative one, 
plus two root two. And then to get the question mark by itself, let's divide both sides by negative one plus two root two. On the left-hand side, we have all of this. And on the right-hand side, we have just the question mark. And now we have the answer for our question mark. I kind of want to be done, but let's rationalize the denominator. We're going to multiply top and bottom by the conjugate of the denominator. This times this gives us all of this. And then on bottom, this times this gives us all of this. Let's combine the negative 42 and the positive 112 to give us positive 70. And then negative 84 root two plus 28 root two is negative 56 root two. And then on bottom, this positive two root two and the negative two root two will cancel each other out. So we're left with one minus eight, which is equal to negative seven. And now we can divide each of these coefficients by the negative seven. 70 divided by negative seven is negative 10 and negative 56 root two divided by negative seven is positive eight root two. And now we're done. This is the answer to our question. Let's give it a label of square units and put a box around it. In this given diagram, the area of the blue triangle is equal to negative 10 plus eight root two square units. How exciting. If you wanna fine tune your geometry and algebra skills so it'll be easier to solve problems like the one in this video, brilliant.org has you covered. We used so many things to solve this one. We had the quadratic formula, scale factors, we had areas of similar figures, rationalizing denominators, corresponding angles and parallel lines, solving ratios, multiplying binomials, area of trapezoids and triangles, sum of interior angles of triangles, isolating variables, substitution. Brilliant covers all of these topics and many more, and all of them are interactive, which is the most effective way to learn. Visit brilliant.org slash andymath or scan the QR code on the screen, or you can click on the link in the description. You can also get 20% off an annual premium subscription subscription. How exciting.